Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Quincy at the Baldwin School. The Baldwin School, which is much of it soon to be demolished, used to be called Quincy High School 1 before they built Quincy High School 2, the present Quincy High School over there. Much of this building, though, will remain because it has a very interesting history and is still very useful. Now recently, some of the graduates from this school gave tours to alumni and, and others who were interested in it before parts of the school gets demolished. And we get a chance to see this school now too before parts of it get demolished. And Mike Klingner, you, were, you and your group, uh, colleagues, former graduates here, um, really took a great interest in this because your you formative part of your life yeah, was, yeah. Was, was lived here. And you thought, well, the public might just want to get a chance to look at this one more time. And they really did, didn't they? Oh, yes, they did. I mean, we were really surprised the enthusiasm. First of all, with our committee, we found out in December, just this last year, that they're going to move the schedule up and this de demolition was going to actually start just this, you know, this summer. Yeah. So I said, okay, we're going to do something. We better have this party early, you know, have it quick. <laughs> and uh, so we started planning in, in January we had as much fun planning it. I had about 20 people on my committee uh, from all the different classes of the 1970s yeah. and I uh, said, you know, this is going to be great because, you know, most, most reunions you only have your class, but you have your memories and your friends from the class below you right. and the classes right. above you. So I so said, let's do this as a multi-year uh, reunion and, and uh, start off at um, Dick's Brewery the first night and then come here Saturday and do tours. Well, it turned out that the tours was the most popular thing of the whole weekend. Yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet. Well, you know, everybody had memories about this yes. place. And they, they probably were unclear too as to what that was gonna happen to it because they'd read that, you know, it was gonna be demolished or then maybe they'd read that only parts of it were gonna be demolished. And they wanted to see, they wanted to probably learn about what the future was too. Yeah, and one of the things I think that drew a lot of people there was in our advertisements, and of course we did everything through Facebook, uh, social media, was that, hey, you know, there's actually underground tunnels throughout the whole building. Well, none of the students knew that. Uh -huh. And uh, so that really kind of, boy, I didn't know there was tunnels there. And, and of course, part of the civil defense, you know, canisters and things were stored down there. So I think a lot of people that, uh, hey, you know, this is an opportunity not only to see the school be the last time, but also a part of the school that they ne didn't even know was there. Yeah, and we get a chance to see uh, to see some of that today because you'll be able to take us to the tunnels. And like you say, civil defense canisters where food yeah. and water were kept in case there was a nuclear, uh, you know, explosion of some kind. So all of that, all of that is still there. And they were thinking ahead because this building was built in that era when, yeah. when the USSR and the United States were at loggerheads and nobody really knew what was going to happen. We, we were all learning how to dive under oh, our yeah. desks yeah. and all that's, that kind of stuff. That's right. The 1950s was that big scare oh, yeah. period and and uh, you know the, the, the uh, all the all the films you saw as a kid, at least I did in, in my generation, you know, that uh, you were kind of frightened about, mm -hmm. you know, the Cold War and what could happen. And of course, um, with the Cuba Missile Crisis, you know, in the early 60s, and that's really the generation mm -hmm. that was going through this, in, you know, and spent their time in this building. So, uh, but the funny thing was, um, a lot of teachers didn't even know it was there. Yeah. That, so, the, the, yeah, tunnels yeah, yeah, the tunnels, yeah, the tunnels themselves. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's it's a it's an interesting story. We stand here, and I, th I think we're facing northeast, but we're facing the new high school. Right. And and this was the main entrance, and, and is still going to be the main entrance of the elementary school that's going to be built here. That that's uh, correct. And so so you you say you got some stories about this entrance yeah. too. Well, what you saw at the parking lot, that's where all the students parked. So mm -hmm. you know, if you're a senior, you got to park, you got a stall, you know. But uh, your sophomore, you weren't uh, really sure if you're going to be able to no. find a place to, to park or not. But this is where most of the students came in. Actually, the main entrance, which we'll see a little later, is facing 30th and Main because that's the most beautiful entrance, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, you know, people didn't, you know wanted to park. You know, kids especially, you know, everybody got their hot car, you know, in the 60s. You wanted to park out here and, and uh, show <laughs> it off seen. to the girls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we parked here and it came in. Well, one of the interesting stories actually is from my brother uh, Jim's uh, class in 1970. He actually barricaded the entrance to this by uh, borrowing uh, some cannons that uh, were at the park district. Big cannons. Mm -hmm. And accidentally rolled them up here in front so you couldn't get to school that morning. 
Uh, so uh, uh, it was kind of a, uh, you know, I, you know, can't get in school and that was the main entrance, you know, but uh, and it was, they were so <laughs> the heavy. The cannons in the way. Yeah. How did he get them here? Yeah, well, he had some help. He, <laughs> some, some of his couple, students, yeah, some of his friends, you know. A couple of mischievous had, guys. Yeah, 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 I think one of them that uh, was helping him on that works for NASA now. So they were, they were good students, but they're also a little bit uh, mischievous, so yeah. But, okay, in generations to come, this is going to be the main entrance right. to the new elementary school, and it'll be grades 1 through five I think is, is that's that correct right? yeah okay. all new Thank great you. and that's kind of a unique story by itself now the first thing that you would have seen when you came in this was the hall of course but this round room which which you rarely rarely see in in any kind of school high school elementary school anything unfortunately this is not going to stay this is going to yes. go but what was this used for well when I was here and it was originally designed this was a student union mm -hmm. and um, you know this is where the cool kids hung out. You know, this is where all the jocks came, and you know, I was a wrestler, and this is this is where uh, you went. Were you one of the cool kids? Well, yeah, I guess. I, I, at least I tried to be. I, I tried to hang out with. But uh, you know, we also had the cafeteria. But the people that brought their lunch would usually, you know, stay at the union. Yeah. And what I think is also kind of unique that uh, I don't hear other schools had. We had a jukebox. So we had a regular jukebox. Put the quarter in and play. Let's, let's play the tunes. Let's go and walk yeah. around a little bit. Maybe we'll hear the music. <laughs> See, this is so, it is so 50s. It is so 50s, I love it. But it's elegant for a school, you know, it's really yeah. elegant. Yes. <laughs> and it would be perfect for a student, student union. You can really can see the kids just hanging in here. And it was, you could, uh, these doors weren't here, so you could just move in and out. It was an open environment. Yeah, yeah the glass was not there. Mm -hmm. if the cafe, main cafeteria was that part, so they did have, you know, of course, uh, lunches served. Uh, most of the time I was here, you also could leave for lunch too. They had an open yeah. uh, lunch period, but uh, a lot of us like to hang out here before school. Uh, it's a good place to meet your girlfriend or whatever you sure. wanted to do. And, and uh, the teachers didn't really bother us in here. You yeah. know, it was kind of like this was your this, this was, was your, your union. Space. This was a place that you could kind of get to talk with your friends. I never even heard the term student union until I got to college. It's never a, even heard of. Well, it. we had one. We you were just it. Quincy was just far ahead than everybody else. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we had a had an area. And uh, it was certainly a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, you got to really you know talk to people. And yeah. you know, junior high, you walk the halls. Mm -hmm. You know, that was how you kind of met with your friends. But here, we had our own union. Yep, it is really cool, and uh, it's 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 elegant in its own way, and it's it's sort of informal at the same time. So you, I could see where kids would feel really comfortable. And then, like you say, the kids that weren't that weren't cool. They would, they would come in. This was the cafeteria area there. Yeah, this, and, uh, if this you is had, where you, you buy your lunch. lunch. You could buy your lunch. You buy your lunch yeah. if you didn't bring a lunch. But yeah. um, uh, is this going to stay? This, this stays. Uh -huh. And during our uh, this last weekend when we had our um, bash and and um, we had all these tables up and it was packed. In fact, we had people standing out here to wait in the oh, line to get the food. We had uh, made rights which Quincy's kind of famous for, the, well, they made right history, sandwiches. More history yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, more history there. <laughs> uh, we had, the, and so, you know, everybody kind of had a little nostalgia. Yeah. And we had people come as far away from Brussels, Belgium, California, uh, Maryland, wow. uh, Florida. So, um, you know, a couple of carloads yeah. from, from Colorado, the, you know, students that left Quincy. And yeah. some of them hadn't been to Quincy for 20, 30 years. Yeah, so yeah, it was a good... Yeah, they just an excuse yeah, to come yeah, back. Yeah. Let's walk down the hall. It happens to be a camp going on. Yeah, that's here right. Today. Yeah. Now this is that's called Blue right. Devil Gym. Blue Devil Gym. It will always be called Blue Devil Gym, it's, it's, I guess. That, huh? that is sacred. You mm -hmm. don't don't get rid of the gym, and, and uh, you know it's one of the largest capacities, and over 4,000 people to be able wow, to sit, sit here when, and you can see uh, the bleachers on both sides. So mm -hmm. what's kind of unique about this gym is that you actually have three gyms. You got this layer and uh, the layers on both sides. So you, you have basketball. You can see the basketball oh, yeah. courts up there. Yeah. So actually three courts, you could, so a very large basketball, you know, Absolutely, area. you could have, uh, if, if you, you could have a practice game going on yep. up there, and you could have a real scrimmage going on here, and another practice going on over there. Well, and the, and the seats just fold out of the way for you. And the, uh, and the basketball was the sacred sport when, you know, when I was there here in the 70s yeah. too, uh, but I was a wrestler, so uh, the, uh, the basketball coach, Coach Hanks at the time, did not want his basketball players to be distracted by the, us worthless wrestlers, you know. So we had the <laughs> curtains drawn 
and we could not peek through those curtains. They told us he didn't want anybody looking through those curtains while they're uh, practicing you basketball. Desecrate that yeah. basketball so, practice. That, that well, so basketball was was the sport. Uh -huh. um, we had to, as wrestling, we had to come in uh, after the basketball worked out because they had cans of soda supplied to them to refresh themselves. Uh, after you they got all that. the soda out, and uh, then the wrestlers came in to, to change. If there clothes. was anything left, yeah, if there was anything, no, we didn't even get the soda. They took the <laughs> soda out. We had we, we had to drink the water. I bet you he was athletic director too. I bet <laughs> you he had to say and everything. But uh, that was that's the Blue Devil yeah. side. So when uh, the Blue Devil comes out for all the basketball games, that's where he comes out. That's uh -huh. the Blue Devil locker room. And of course, the, the opposing team was on the, on the opposite side. Yeah. And this one, when this becomes an elementary school, this will remain Blue Devil uh, yeah. uh, Court. That, that's right. And uh, and you can see when you look at the wall back over here, you can see all the tradition and all the all the championships and that great winning streak that you all had that one year. Yeah. Terrific. Well, it's nice that some things stay the same, isn't it? Yeah. Well, like I said, this is sacred. Yep. You don't touch it. Todd Moore, we talked with Mike about these tunnels. Yes. And we were talking about back in the in the fifties uh, when there was this the, the nuclear scare, of course. Right. The, the building was designed, I guess, with these tunnels in mind so that if that ever occurred, the kids, the staff, everybody would have a place to go for safe That's for correct. safety. Right. So what this this tunnel that we're in here, these actually extend through the entire school under the corridors. Is that, that the way it's laid out? That's correct. The corridors are 14 foot wide, so the tunnels are 14 foot wide, and you mm -hmm. can see the height here. Uh, ample room to walk, except for you to watch the pipes. So it's really a dual purpose: utility tunnel system to get the steam piping and water and all that around, yeah. but also served as a shelter in case of an emergency. If, if a building were built under normal circumstances, you'd still have a space down here for the pipes, but you wouldn't have all all of this space to we're, stand up in. Is that that's correct? Right? Yeah, most most utility tunnels are where you're on your back crawling or or you know on your hands and knees. Mm -hmm. This is this is pretty unique. Mm -hmm. So at the time it was built, there are a few other ones out there like this, but not very many. Yeah. What year did you graduate? I graduated in 82. 82. Yes. Were you aware of these tunnels? I was not when I was in school. <laughs> I was here for ninth and 10th grade, senior high one, but I did not know these were down yeah. here. Okay, well, let's walk real slowly down this way if we can, because mm -hmm. there's some other interesting aspects of this. Mm -hmm. you, see they have, you see they have phones down here on the wall. Right. And uh, when this was, when this was uh, built and planned, and boy, you really have to duck. Yeah, you have to duck some of these places. Yeah. Um, there were, when we were talking about the nuclear scare, and of course, they had to keep food and water down here. Right. So that if anybody had to come down to the tunnel for nuclear reasons, there would be provisions down here. Yes. And here we That's go. That's correct. This, so this, this area opens up, and this was the 64 edition. Mm -hmm. So everything else was 57. This little area that we're underneath here was, fit, was 64. Uh -huh. This being a wide open area, you could actually fit a lot of people down in here. Uh -huh. Now, there's about six different access points into the tunnel system, the one which we came down, mm -hmm. but also throughout the corridor system, there are closets that allow us to get down into the tunnels quickly, and that's, that was the idea. You could get closets, kids down. And then uh, actually some trap doors there's too. There's custodial huh? rooms off the corridor. You open the door and there's a steel trap door with a ladder that goes down. Uh -huh. And so they're, they're spread throughout the, the, the hallways. Yeah. And so if you had to get kids in quickly, you could get them down that way, but then migrate the kids to this area. But now you have first-hand experience. The kids wouldn't know to do this on their own. It would have taken the teachers or staff to get the kids assembled and get them down there, right? Because you wouldn't have known. Wouldn't did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing because the kids would be down here sneaking yeah. around. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we hear stories. Had a couple <laughs> stories the other day that some people did know they were down here, so I'm sure they might have used it uh, to sneak into an area. Probably so. did. Probably yeah. did. Yeah. Um, but they couldn't really keep them totally secure because if you needed to get in here, you needed to get you in here. You had to get here quickly, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Is, is, are those the canisters those down the, at the those end? Those are the canisters, yes. Yeah, I assume by now they're probably empty, but yes. this, is what, this is what they look like. This is it, and they, all the... Oh, they're all, yeah, you can see they're all up in here. Yeah, you can see the writing on them for, you know, Civil Office of the Let's Civil Let's take a Defense. look at this one. Survival supplies furnished by Office of Civil Defense, Department of Defense, and they supplied, I'll be darned. I I really I wish I could see in one and see how they packed that. That'd be fascinating, wouldn't it? If they still had anything in them. From what we understand, they're 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 empty. But uh, 
<laughs> I guess you never know. You might find one with something <laughs> in it. <laughs> you wouldn't want it. But, yeah, you probably wouldn't want it. But it'd be interesting, though. You yeah. know how they, I don't know if they had dried food back then, but it would have been uh, you know water and, and yeah. probably some kind of dehydrated food that I you would, could mix up. I would imagine that's what they had, yes, yeah. yes. So. This is really interesting. Thanks for the tour. And, and like you oh, say, this goes all through the school. Yeah, it's probably, I'd say, if you walk the entire loop, you're probably a quarter mile, yeah. I would imagine, or a little more. Plenty of room for all the kids. Plenty of room. And the tunnels are just like what you saw. In yeah. fact, there's in most areas, you can walk upright and, upright and not even worry about hitting yeah. your head. Yeah. So wide open. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you bet. Uh, Todd Moore, I was flabbergasted when I looked in here to the theater. It's immense. It's big. It, yes. It, and, it, and this is presently a, a middle school. It's going to be an mm -hmm. elementary school. Correct. Can they use a facility this big? They can. Oh, uh, now there's, there's 1,284 seats. Oh, wow. And this will be a 600 student building, so we'll have plenty of extra seats. But mm -hmm. all the other events that they can utilize this for, not just during the school year, but or during the school events, but other events that uh, may want to come in here on weekends and so forth. Mm hmm Yes. And I guess it's not, it's not getting used to its to its extent fullest extent now because it's kind of warm in here it is yeah. it is and we're as part of this project we're going to put air conditioning in so there's a duct work system up there right now we're just going to put air conditioning units on the roof and tie into it so oh, we'll see. have a fully air conditioned facility i imagine the community groups are going to be wanting to use this they're going to love it yeah and actually that's perfect isn't it because you want the community to use absolutely this. it's just like when we air conditioned junior high school now it's used all year round. Yeah, and that's a beautiful, well, that's a beautiful it theater is. too. It is. Um, this doesn't have the decoration that that does, but it looks like it has the quality. Like I'm, I'm looking at it, it looks like it'd be acoustically sound. Is it good? It's very good. And you see the facets in the walls, which helps with the sound and the reverberation. You've mm -hmm. got the, uh, the acoustic panels in the back. You've got these fins on the ceiling. And, mm -hmm. and so my understanding from the, from the mus musicians that this is a really finely tuned theater. Yeah, they like playing here. They do. Yeah. yeah. Um, these these fins though these these look like they were maybe made of plaster at one time and, and you got one of a retired teacher that has an interesting story about this don't you yes during our <laughs> during our tour the other day uh, my old chemistry teacher uh, John Engelmeyer who's been retired for some time but he was working on this back in 1956 57 and he was up and he on a scaffold and and uh, according to John he lost his balance and he grabbed one of those fins mm -hmm. and you're about 27 feet off the floor oh, man. And he said his handprint is still up there. Well, it would be because the, because the mold was wet at that time, so his handprint is up there. So for him to come through the other day and point that out was really a, a he's neat the story. only one that knows where that is. Exactly. You know, who's going to go look? I mean, <laughs> right. There's no way to really get up there and see. <laughs> I'm also uh, I'm I'm very impressed with the depth of this stage because it goes way. I mean, you could use it for for almost anything. Yes, right? you really could. It's got an access door in the back for, for bands and, you know, and, and teeth. Yeah, it's got an overhead in. door, overhead so you can bring in big stuff. And you've got the nice, you got a, you got a full height fly space mm -hmm. with all the curtains. And yeah. so you, it really is just a full performing yeah. theater. Yeah, it yeah. Really it, it's is. nice to know that it'll be air conditioning and air conditioned and yeah. and, uh, and well used. Yes, yeah. and they've got new lighting up in the, up in the top here that mm -hmm. they've uh, put in here recently. So it's just a, it's a great, mm -hmm. great place to play. This stays, the gym stays, the circular room, the round room goes. It goes. Cafeteria uh, stays. Cafeteria stays. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. And then, of course, everything that's built into that will be state of the art as you would expect a brand new school to be. But that will tie the new part portions together. Exactly. So in the new building, we'll have everything except for the cafeteria and the gym because we've already got it here. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, yeah, everything will be state of the art, and we're going to refurbish the hallways that are existing. For example, outside the auditorium and the gym, that'll all get new ceilings and new wall systems and sure. new lighting. And so mm -hmm. the school is really going to be uh, overall just like a brand new school. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. You bet. Mike, we're, we're outside. I, you call this the mall, yes. right? Is that what, when you were a student, was it called the mall? Yes. And where we were earlier with the round room, you could see out into the mall and on a nice day like today. Uh, you could eat out out here, so people took their lunch or, or, mm -hmm. or cafeteria food and ate on the picnic tables. And yeah. and uh, if you had to uh, take a shortcut to your class, you know, you're always talking to your friends, so you have the last minute you can oh, cut no, across. I'm yes, my class. <laughs> that's my class. It's just almost like a college campus. I mean, it it is. really it for very for a high school, very unique. You you all were, must like have this. been really good kids. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Because they, you well, were treated, they treated you like adults. Well, you mature early, I guess that, you uh -huh. know, because you really do go about that atmosphere. <laughs> now, we're looking at the, uh, at the, that's the, what's the north, is that north? That, or is that's that, a, that faces, yeah, 30th and Main, okay. so, so that way's north and you're kind of okay, northwest. So. Okay, we're looking at northwest, and that's going to be the, the part of the school that gets the, demolished the, the first. The two-story part is the part that gets demolished first, uh -huh. and, and uh, that's what we call phase one. 
and that's this summer. So just in a few weeks, yeah. uh, that's starting. Uh, you probably saw some people with asbestos inspectors and things. I and, did see that. And yeah. they're doing the uh, asbestos and they, uh, checking And they, they have to do that first, don't yeah. they? They make sure get all that, that cleared out first. The asbestos has to go to a certain landfill yeah. and be certified yeah. where uh, some of the other material can actually be reused mm -hmm. uh, if they want. So uh, it kind of goes in, in yeah. phases. So asbestos removals first. Yeah. Let's get our bearings here. Okay, we know the round room. And then we saw we were just in the auditorium, which is massive. You can see how high that goes. I think, I think Todd said it's a 25-foot uh, ceiling, and then you've got space above that so it, it's that's a massive structure there yeah and directly behind us is the uh, gymnasium right structure blue devil gym right mm -hmm. blue devil gym okay that stays and then of course this will be still be a mall area where we're no, standing no with the main entrance where we started uh mm -hmm. that's the going to be the main entrance of the school so actually they're going to use the mall for part of the school building Mm -hmm. And again, that's kind of the configuration to kind of follow. I think one of the goals of the school district is to have similar type facilities for each of the grade schools. And I mean, that's certainly a very unique part of this whole project is, um, in, in fact, our, our superintendent said he's the only one he knows of in the country that's building all new grade schools for the whole community, mm -hmm. the, the size community. So It is a massive undertaking. Yes. It really is. And fast track. I mean, we're mm -hmm. getting it all done in just a few years. Yeah. Now, it's interesting too. Now, you know, you and um, you and Todd are the only ones we've talked to for this program. And you are, were really good for us to talk to because you are the actual planners. You're an architect firm and, yeah. and Todd's an engineering firm. And you're actually two thirds of the of the, the uh, companies that are gonna be providing the services yeah. to build this, aren't you? Yeah, we both uh, provide AE services. So mm -hmm. we kind of provide a little bit of, of both. And Pepperstone Bach was another firm that was involved. So one of the other goals of the community is to have all three of the local um, you know, designers to be involved. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was so much work to do in a short period of time, one firm couldn't handle it all. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think it was very fortunate, at least certainly for us being local and local taxpayers, let's keep as much work locally as we can. Mm -hmm. So a very good move by the school board as far mm -hmm. as we're concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and, and uh, you know, I, I think, uh, of course, everybody would like to hire local if they can, to have local mm -hmm. companies do the work. And it speaks well for Quincy that you have firms here that can handle the, the, the project like that. Yes, yes. It's a big it's a big job. Oh, it is. And it was too big for any one firm to do it. So, mm -hmm. okay, all three of us, and we'll just split the buildings up. Uh, we did two buildings, and, and Architectus is doing this building. So we split the buildings up so that we could get it done in a quick time frame. Mm -hmm. Now, when you t undertake a project like that, of course, you had your drawings submitted long ago, and the whole project approved long ago. So what do you do now? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to find other work, yeah. you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's part of our trade, you know. Yeah. But uh, we're always. Kind but you'll of be ahead. on site too. Won't oh you? yeah, oh yeah. yeah. We have a lot of construction. In fact, uh, we do a lot of the geotechnical. Our firm did, did all the borings and geotechnical work, mm -hmm. and a lot of the construction inspection, uh, masonry inspection, concrete strength testing. So a lot of it's involved during the construction phase for our mm -hmm. firms as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you and Todd for joining us on the program. It's been a real eye opener. I'm really glad that your tours tours were a great idea. That your tours were were um, accepted, like with the kind of kind of enthusiasm that they were because it showed that a lot of the people that grew up in Quincy really wanted to be involved in what's going oh, on. Yes, like when we started the idea, all of a sudden I had all kinds of volunteers. Yeah. I'll help, I'll help, I'll help. So, and it took a lot of us to get a you know, whole weekend plan and get the, the tour guide set up and, and get permission from the school uh, and uh, not get any trouble. Uh, so, uh, you know, everything worked out well. Yeah. Great weekend. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Yeah. And just, uh, just so you know, you may not be from Quincy, so you may not know the extent of this project, but there are six projects involved here, all of which will be completed by the end of 2019. With another Illinois Story in Quincy, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.